It's Friday, January the 31st, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and this is episode number 19 of TEN, Transportive Old News for the week beginning January 27th, 2014. Last summer, Elon Musk, when speaking to Tesla shareholders, mentioned that he would like to travel across the US from coast to coast in a Model S when the supercharger network he was planning finally linked the two sides of the country together. However, this week, a father and daughter team beat him to it, traveling from New York to Los Angeles in their Tesla Model S. And of course, this trip didn't cost them anything at all on the supercharger network because the supercharger network is free. The team kept the Tesla community up to date with posts on the official Tesla Motors forum where everyone was rooting for them. It seems though that Elon, who is not to be showed up, is planning his own trip. He and his family will be taking a road trip over spring break. He also let everyone else know that two teams from Tesla are gearing up for the moment to try and do that trip this weekend. In fact, right now, in the opposite direction, in the fastest time the supercharger network allows. Oh yes, he did also congratulate the father and daughter team. Well, kinda. He retweeted PlugShare, who congratulated them. And you know, on Twitter, that's the same thing. As the saying goes, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And if that's true, then we think Nissan should be particularly touched by the latest vehicle rumoured to debut at this year's Beijing Auto Show in April from BYD. That's because the BYD M3 bears an uncanny resemblance to the Nissan NV200, Nissan's multi-purpose platform which is offered in panel van, MPV and taxi cab variants among others. Copying the looks of another car isn't unusual in China, but what has got our attention is the suggestion that BYD isn't just stopping with the NV200's design aesthetic, it wants to replicate its drivetrain options too. Like the Nissan original, the M3 will reportedly come with a 1.5 litre gasoline engine as standard, but BYD is rumoured to be considering an all-electric variant of the vehicle, using the powertrain and battery pack from its BYD E6 crossover. We had an interesting time with the BYD E6, so you know, we remain unconvinced that this will work out, but we do look forward to finding out more. Thanks to some sales data from Hedges & Company, it appears the state of Washington, not California, is where most Teslas were sold during 2013. And this is contrary to what many people, including us at Transport Evolved, would guess. Last year, an average out of 7.9 out of every 10,000 new cars registered in California were Teslas. Yet in Washington state during 2013, an average of 8.3 out of every 10,000 new car registrations were Teslas, placing it above California in the Tesla loving stake. Of course, there are plenty of reasons why this is so. While the state of Washington doesn't offer any specific rebates for buyers of plug-in cars over the $7,500 federal tax credit, electric cars are exempt from sales tax, and that alone can save thousands on a new car sticker price. In addition, the state doesn't require EV drivers to pay tax on charging station installations for their home, although they do have to pay a $100 annual tax to offset the revenue normally collected from motorists via Washington's gasoline taxes. Electricity prices, believed to be the cheapest in the whole of the US, also help make EVs a no-brainer for anyone wanting to save money there. If you like Volkswagen Golfs, then you're probably a fan of the GTI, GTD and R32 models due to their powerful engines, great road handling and sporty personalities. Well, if you also like eco cars, you'll be excited to know that later this year, a new performance-oriented badge will enter the Golf stable, the plug-in GTE. And as you can guess, the E stands for electric. Volkswagen's soon-to-launch Golf plug-in hybrid will combine the turbocharged four-cylinder direct injection gasoline engine, developing a maximum of 148 brake horsepower with an 80 kilowatt electric motor. That's the same size motor as the one found in Nissan's all-electric Leaf. Range in all-electric mode is claimed to be about 31 miles, courtesy of an 8.8 kilowatt hour battery pack fitted underneath the load bay where the standard Volkswagen Golf's gas tank sits. Due to this, we'd expect the GTE to have a smaller liquid fuel tank than its non-plug-in sibling, but we're not sure how much smaller this is at the time. Combined, the car will accelerate from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 7.6 seconds, which is just a little bit faster than the BMW i3 Rex and a little bit slower than the BMW i3 EV. While Californians may miss out on some perks if they choose to buy an i3 Rex over the all-electric i3 BEV later this year, as we've reported recently, buyers in New Jersey will be able to avoid paying sales tax on their i3 regardless of the model they choose. That's according to Tom Malogny, one of BMW's most prominent electronauts, who's driven more miles in an electric BMW Mini E and subsequently a BMW Active E as part of BMW's long EV test fleet program than anybody else we know. 
Like BMW North America, Malogny lives in New Jersey and he posted the confirmation yesterday on the BMW i3 Facebook page after talking to BMW Top Brass. But why the tax breaks? New Jersey, like other states in the union, follows the same vehicle classification set up by the California Air Resources Board when deciding what perks and incentives to offer its green car buyers. Under CARB's regulations, the i3 Rex is classified as a BEV-X, a new classification of vehicle outlined to cater to vehicles that are primarily electric but do have an onboard range extending engine. Just a very, very small one. Have you met George? He's from Atlanta and he likes iced tea and pulled pork sandwiches. So do I. He's also a Nissan Leaf owner who switched to driving electric after being fed up with sitting in traffic and paying for gas. Oh, and he's a cartoon. George is the focus of a new advert for the Nissan Leaf, which focuses on the customer experience rather than the ethereal and complex subjects such as climate change and mindfulness. The advert also shows how the EV bug can spread through simple measures, such as showing someone that these cars do work or even just explaining how much money is being saved. As adverts go, it's simple, interesting, fun and relatable. Fingers crossed this shows a new direction for electric car advertising because, you know, up until now, they've been really rubbish. <laughs> In the past few months, we've heard some rumours that Nissan was planning to extend the Nissan Leaf range in the future with improved battery technology and perhaps bigger battery packs. But now it appears the Japanese automaker is getting serious about offering a long leg Leaf in a future model lineup. You see, Nissan is asking existing Leaf customers how much they'd pay for a 150 mile Leaf, hypothetically, if it were to make one, that is, or maybe one of its friends was. The survey was first reported over on the popular My Nissan Leaf Owners Forum on Tuesday, where various Leaf owners in the US said that the, the automaker had contacted them via email to ask their thoughts about future Leaf models. Perhaps the most interesting part of this hypothetical longer range Leaf, however, is the fact that Nissan asked the owners it invited to take part in the survey to say how much they'd be willing to pay for the extra range. The most expensive option was $5,000 more than the current model. Maybe Nissan is feeling the pressure to keep ahead of the game. What do you think? BMW's production chief, Harold Kruger, told Automotive News this week that the automaker won't be adding any new electric models to its lineup until it knows what demand really is for plug-in cars. That's beyond the i3 and i8, of course. Given the fact that BMW has a dedicated group of supporters and even more envious fans from their Mini E and Active E trials, plus more than 11,000 claimed orders so far for its i3 and i3 Rex, we aren't quite sure what would constitute proof to BMW that there is demand for these cars. I mean, some people have to wait six months for their i3 order to be fulfilled. That's demand, right? We're not sure if Kruger's take on the future plug-in BMW development is an official company line or his own opinion, but we have to admit to being a little disappointed that after significant investment in plug-in cars, BMW still seems to be unconvinced of EV's future. Why the face? Hawaii is known as a great holiday destination worldwide. I mean, it's hot, it's sunny, it's tropical, and it's got lots of EV charging infrastructure. And now, thanks to a new law which was passed yesterday by the Hawaii Senate, companies have to provide charging spaces for EVs. I mean, that's if their parking lots are more than 100 cars large. If they don't, they could face a fine from $5,000 to $50,000. That's incredible. Way to go, Hawaii. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEM. And in the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print. Subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube. And join us on Sunday when we'll be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and until next time, stay juiced up. think Nissan should be particularly touched by the latest vehicle. And Mark, what are you doing? Okay, I'm just going to read this because Mark, Mark, you are being naughty.